uh, towards more towards the north pole correct and this b point the b point is towards the S equator equator or south but they all are lying they both are lying on the same uh, like right. uh, meridian so like this is a case where you can talk about same hemisphere which is hemisphere here north and same meridian same hemisphere meridian. same meridian okay. case right that's draw a diagram here at one point of time you necessarily might not require a diagram to answer these questions but drawing the diagram initially is always beneficial for understanding about the field let's draw a diagram so always make sure you draw comparatively bigger diagrams Right? You don't have to draw the entire earth here because this is confined to a particular hemisphere. Now, first thing first, which view are you, are you going to choose? We have seen three different views, a front view, top view and side view. Which view do you think will help you uh, in this question better? Particularly if I look at eastern uh, hemisphere view, like particularly the... Mm -hmm. View from the eastern hemisphere? So we have three different views, front view. Mm -hmm. If I draw in the front view, will it help me? Front view is going to two different hemispheres and it is giving you uh, meridians. You won't be able to see the anti-meridian, which is not required because the meridian is the same. So if I mark the uh, meridian here, 27 degrees 15 minutes east, I can simply mark anywhere I want. Oh, but first the prime meridian uh, we need like yeah. So ah, okay. Like if I normal way, we can yeah. say that. Understood. So if I if I want to, if you want to mark me to mark the prime meridian, somewhere always over here. Yeah. And this towards the east, right? So we'll yeah. just take it off, just to reduce the number of lines. But you know, it's, you can just draw only one meridian, so you can just draw it wherever you want. Now, what is significant here is the uh, parallels of latitude. Remember, one single line is not going yeah. to fix the position. You also need the lats. So one is on 60 degrees north, other is on 30 degrees north, which is going to be more closer to the poles, as you said? Yeah, 60 degree north. That's right, 60 like degrees point north is a. more closer to the poles, and then we also have 30 degrees north, which is closer to the equator, or you can say closer to south pole, that's also correct. Right? Yeah. Now, so one of the very common mistakes that students make here, I've seen is in marking the points. You know all these things. But you kind of mark these are the points, right, where the lap long intersects. No, and the point where 60 north intersects with 2315 east has to be A. Yeah. Right? And this has to be B. Do not interchange this. It might not change your magnitude, but it will change your direction. Right? In this question, it might not be really significant, but most of the questions, it can be significant. If you are traveling from A to B, and if you mark this as A and this as B, you are traveling towards south now. Whereas if you mark this as A and this as B, yeah. now it's the same change in attitude, but you are going to travel north. Right? No. Perfect. Now we are asked to find the shortest distance. So how would you find the shortest distance? Shortest distance between any two points is the shortest arc of the great circle passing through those two points. So what is the great circle passing through these two points? is the 27 degree 15 minutes east 27 meridian. 15 east. meridian right so you're talking about this great circle here this is the great yeah. circle right now you know this question so i'm not really going to uh, make you find the answer here i don't want you to understand here is how does this great circle track look like it looks like a take an arc B. Right? Uh, what if I draw this on a piece of paper? Will be straight line, mm -hmm. be straight line. Yes. vertical line. So you can see how gray circle tracks. You can call this as a track because it has a direction being measured from the north. So this is this is A to B is going to be measured from your local meridian clockwise will be 180 degrees. Or if you're traveling from B to A, it's exactly along the meridian, therefore it is a zero degree track. Right? So it's a track. So gray circle track on the globe, you can see it appears to be a uh, curve. And on, okay. on if, if I convert that to chart, uh, not all the charts, but the charts which we generally use for navigation, uh, it can be a straight line. So you have, you have gone through Mercator chart, as you told me, you have gone through that first part of it. On a Mercator chart, again, your great circle tracks are going to be a curve. But then you have a problem. In case of Mercator chart, 
uh, it doesn't consider the the uh, the convergence of the meridians. It's meridians and curves. Yeah, it is just like the wall chart in your school, where the meridians are all yeah. considered parallel. Are parallel. Right. Therefore, there is no convergence, and for that reason, uh, the great circle tracks appears to they appear to be a curvature. We will see why a bit later. Uh, but when you talk about charts like the one which is normally used for navigation, especially between the uh, between the equator and maybe like around 10 degrees to 70 degrees north south, we use Lambert's chart, which is more like a conical projection. And there, the great circle tracks are still curves, but the curvature is so less that we can still consider it as a straight line. Now, what is the advantage of considering great circle track as a near straight line? Is you can just take a scale. Put one more scale here, other than here, and you can draw a straight line. Drawing a straight line is very simple, but drawing a curvature has a lot of parameters to consider. It's not very easy to draw a curve, right? Just by no drawing a normal curve itself is not very easy. Think about it, I can draw a curve like this if I want, I can draw a curve like this if I want. So, what is the degree of curvature? So many things are coming into picture. But draw a straight line to A and B, take a scale, go start that. So it is more easier for plotting if you can depict your great circles as straight lines. That is why these Mercator got uh, kind of obsolete and Lambert's is more actually being used. Right? Mercator is, is, is heavily used when you are flying around the equator. Uh, we'll see why a bit later uh, in that session. Otherwise, it's mostly large part of the navigation happens using uh, the Lambert's charts. Right? So I just want to tell you that. Yes. So here. Uh, yeah. Looking at the great circle, great circle, great circle track here, how will you find the distance? What we have we need to measure is we cannot measure distances, we can measure only angles. Right? Angle. And where is the angle measure? At the center of the earth. Yeah, so how will you measure the angle of B? So first you join point of intersection, sorry, point of intersection of the local meridian with the equator, hmm. and then the corresponding points on the Parallel is relative, right? What is this angle? This angle is 30. This is 30 degrees. That's why it's called 30 degree measured towards north. What about this one? This is 60 degrees. And yeah, that's why it's called 60 degree north. So what angular change are we looking at between this 30 and 60? Is the angle that is over here? This is 30 degrees. Which is 30 degrees. What is the corresponding arc we are looking at on the surface? It is the projection towards your side of the three dimensional figure. Yeah. Right? But yeah. so this is the corresponding distance. Distance corresp angular distance corresponding to this angle at the center of 30 degrees. Can you call this 30 degrees as a latitude? Yeah. Yeah, we can say yes. Yeah, we, it's we a we change see. in latitude. Yeah. Not latitude. It's the difference between the latitudes. Therefore, mm -hmm. what is 30 degrees? It is the Change in latitude or the chillat, also called as d lat. Right? So, here the chillat is equal to how much 30 degrees. 30 degrees. Right? Now, even though it's not really significant for this question, uh, it depends upon the direction you're traveling that the sign of chillat is going to change. If you're traveling from A to B, this is going to be chillat is going to be. 30 degrees again, but in what direction is the change happening? From A to B? It is happening in south. South. On the other hand, if you are traveling the reciprocal track, so that is going to be again 30 degrees. 30 degrees north. But it's not. From B to A, it's north. Right? So you have the idea with you. Right. Now, we are asked to find out the shortest distance. Now, you can have both change in latitude and change in longitude. What is the change in longitude here? It is zero. Zero because both of them have the same longitude, same meridian, right? Therefore, change in longitude is zero. This is what I was saying that the questions which generally we do in general now is relatively easier because you either have change in lat or you'll be having change in long. And if you have a change in both lat and long, the, the, it, it might be a special case where you can still find out it quicker. You won't have a question where you have some random change in lat and long and no special arrangements, no special cases and then ask you to find short distance. It's going to be extremely difficult to find that. We can find out, but it's not as easy as we do it here. Just by some chillat, chillong and conversions, it won't work. Right? So here, uh, I have actually explained that to a couple of my batches, but then people were mad, so I kind of stopped doing that because it's, 
it's confusing them a lot. It's not required in the first place, but out of curiosity, when people ask, I do explain. It takes a lot of time to explain also. Because you have to put so a lot of mathematical and trigonometric stuff into it, come up with a big equation, it's already there, but how the equation is there, I probably have to explain that first and then put these values in there. It's a bit difficult. All right, so now whatever distance you're going to look at is only because of a change in that, but not change in longitude, right? Now, how would you convert this change in latitude uh, to distance? We have the conversion. First, you have to convert this to minutes. So that is one degree is equal to 60 minutes. So 30 degrees is equal to 1,800 minutes. Now, you have to make a pause here. Minute. Take a stop here. Now we have to convert this to nautical miles. So what is the check which you have to do? One nautical, uh, one uh, minute is equal to one nautical mile. One nautical mile, and that will happen only along a, a long circle. This is the check which you have to do. Remember, latitudes are always measured. Over here, you can see we are measuring it along the meridian of 27 degrees 50 minutes, which is a semi-great circle, which is part of a great circle. Therefore, I can convert this 1,800 minutes to 1,800 nautical minutes, 1800. and that is the shortest distance between these two, these two points, which is the great circle distance. And great circle distance is the shortest distance. You know this, right? This part, I think you know. It's not, it's not a big deal for you, right? Yes. So you can just draw this diagram if you haven't. You can just try doing it. Can you explain this to me using a different view? So what we have used here, this is more like the front view. Yeah. Is there any other view that can help you find? Uh, explain this to me. Same. I'll run this off because now you know this. This part is here. <coughs> Particularly if we consider a top view, then it is possible. Yeah. So top view. Yeah. So at the center we will be having north pole. So you are the north celestial pole and this is the north pole. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what has this line which I have drawn? North pole. No. And this is the equator. That's the equator. Alright. Now, you can you can talk me through. I'll, I'll draw what you tell me. So from here, like, uh, suppose uh, from the true north to a vertical line downward, we can say that th that is a prime meridian. We may consider so that is the basically the prime meridian will be looking like this. From here, 27 degrees uh, clockwise. Clockwise. Uh, 27 degrees clockwise, like in this direction. I'll be putting a single one more line that will represent my meridian of 27 degrees. No, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, sorry. This is the clockwise. Uh, no, this side. Um, because it is 27 degree 15 minutes east. Yeah, so no, no, you, told me, you told me clockwise, I'm just trying to draw it clockwise. This is not clockwise, right? Uh, no, it will be an anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise, right yes. Right side. Yes. Because yeah, sorry, yeah. east yeah, sorry, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. So we'll be making an, uh, another line uh, in the same way. The anti clockwise that will represent the meridian of 27 degrees and uh, 15 minutes east. East. Right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. From here, now uh, we can draw both these latitudes. So, this 30 degree north latitude will be a little small circle uh, just after the equator. Okay. And, uh, and this 60 degree uh, north latitude will be even smaller circle. Yeah. The smaller one is going to so be. So, we can draw two. Yeah, so this is 60 degree we may say and the outer one in between equator and this will be the 30 degree north of the same and this uh, line between this uh, line of 27 degree 15 minutes east in between 30 degree and uh, 60 degree north is basically the distance. Uh, so this is the point A like, and this is the yeah, point, this B. point A. And this right, is so B. B is 30 with 27, A is 60 with 27. So the distance we are looking at is from uh, between A and B. Yeah. This is the great circle distance we are looking at. But this also can help you find out the answer. You can find this as a change in latitude along the same meridian. Therefore, there is no change in longitude. And along the same meridian, so it is a great circle track. Therefore, you can do the conversion and you can actually find out. Alright? Yeah. Make sense?
Yes. What about side view? Side view is not required here. The particular advantage of side view is when you have an anti meridian. When you have two meridians in the picture, that's when side view is going to be helpful. You can still find out using side view, but that's not required. You don't have to actually uh, draw using a side view. I have seen instructors teaching this using two dimensional picture, which is not wrong, which is okay. Uh, but three dimensional would give you a better idea about how the actual projection is. But some people do find it difficult to understand this. As I've told you, there's a curvature coming towards you and going back. If you cannot really, really, really imagine this, two-dimensional view is the best one to uh, uh, learn, use to learn. Alright? Yes, perfect. You can draw this view also. You can just write down as a stop view. So some students find it easier to depict in top view because there is no three-dimensional position coming up, so it's more like easier to understand. But having said that, make sure you exactly know what is eastward and westward. So this is like yeah. eastward. 